Hey all, Rack here. Um, so this is an overview of the build I've just done uh, for my new water build. It's the first time I've done hard loops uh, in a water build. Uh, so I'd sort of take you through a few pictures of uh, the build I put in place. Um, one of the difficulties I had was when I was looking at the Lian Li PC 011 Dynamic was um, the side uh, radiator, how they were actually putting, people were putting fittings in. Um, so I've got some better pictures on that on what I did um, to make the run because uh, that was one I really found some difficulty in, in finding out how people did the runs. So anyway, this is the first picture. So then I came from a um, NZXT S340. You can see I've got a um, Corsair Hydro H100i uh, in here. Um, most of the equipment I'm just transferring over to the new computer so the RTX moves across. Um, some of the fans I reutilize, um, the hydro I, I've actually got rid of. Um, hard drives pretty much stay the same, although I did buy a, a new M.2 drive, um, memory, etc., graphic, and the motherboard, all the rest of it is all exactly the, the same. Um, it's really the kind of water box and, and new fans that I put into the new one. Okay, on this next photo, we're now looking inside the Lian Li. So I've now moved the motherboard across. I've put the CPU in. Uh, I upgraded the CPU, so this is an i7-9700K um, using the EK Velocity water block. Uh, I'm using mainly EK fittings on pretty much everything because from everything I looked at, they were you know, they had really good reviews um, and they looked good too. So started to wrap some of the um, cables around the back, which I haven't got a picture of yet. Um, but this is really just the the first view of it being put inside the case. I mean, what's great about the case is just the space is just fantastic, um, especially for uh, water loops. On the next picture, I've now got quite a few of the pieces in here. So uh, the motherboard from previously, um, I've used uh, some Coolstream SE 360 rads. So there's one at the top, there's one uh, at the back reuse the fans from my previous build. Uh, they're all Corsair fans. The top ones are the SP120s, I think they were. Um, the HD120s, RGB ones are going down the side, so they were the new ones. Again, there's um, lots of bits around the back just you know, redoing all the cables and, and so forth. The Probably the bit to show here is, or at least to point out, is the is the rads themselves. So I went for the slim ones. Uh, again, there were some reviews on people putting these in. Uh, you know how big a radiator you want. Um, I, I looked at lots of videos around. Jay's two cents was a really good one on on size of rads, uh, and you don't really need really thick ones. Um, it's more about the 360. So the slim worked really well. Gives me lots of room, uh, and they're easier to. Uh, put pipes around, which you'll see in one of the later pictures. Okay, closer view now. Um, starting to put some of the fittings in. Got the uh, RTX now in there, so I, you know, followed the instructions. Looked at a few videos in putting the um, velocity water block on. Uh, this is the nickel and plexi one uh, with a black back. Um, You'll see I've started to put the EK fittings in again. Now this was um, starting to plan out the actual loop. I've done some paper planning beforehand, but it's only when you start putting it together you start really seeing where the loop is. Uh, you'll see with the RTX that I've um, I've put the um, 90 degree bends at the bottom. I'll move them around again and then again later on um, as you're planning a loop. And, and again, that was a learning for me. Even when you plan it, it's only when you start lining things up that you notice whether um, a loop will work in a certain direction or not, but it broadly follows the same sort of overall loop uh, of how I wanted the water to actually go around the PC. Okay, on this view, we've now got the pump in. That's an EK Revo 140 D5 RGB pump. Uh, I looked at bigger pumps than this, but uh, this one I thought was a, a, a good size and fitted in quite well. One thing to note with this pump, you've got to buy a mountain bracket to fix it to the fan, which I've got on the bottom fan. Uh, I didn't have that at the time, so that caused me some issues. Um, I've now got the drain plug coming down 
um, three-way spitter um, for the fittings and I've moved the graphic card fittings up because the intention was originally I was going to do a straight line across um, but that changes a bit later on due to the to the placement again I'm still working out how things are fitting and how to buy some more fittings uh, most of the cards are now in the um, uh, wires are now in place mostly uh, but a bit more to do Okay, now with the first two pieces of tube put in place, um, I thought the um, bending was actually relatively easy. I looked at all the videos online. Um, you just need to make sure you follow what people have put in the past. So you know, when you're, you're uh, bending them, that you heat them up um, uniformly, you keep turning them when they get um, soft, that's when you bend and then you hold it in place. Um, so it worked pretty well for me. I didn't use a jig in the end, I just used um, kind of sight um, and compared it kind of against a, a, a set square or something square. Um, but they worked out really well. You can see I've now got the flow coming out of the graphics card, going into the top rad, back out of the rad and into the CPU. Um, I had to get a couple more fittings, uh, mainly a 30 mil one at the top right, uh, just to pull it away from the fan a little bit so I could plug in properly. Uh, the one on the left is 290 degrees. Again, just to stand it off um, of the rad at the top and also to put it in line with the graphics card below. So for the next one, um, again a, well this time two 90 degree bends for the longest pipe, uh, so coming out of the CPU, ran into the bottom right hand side of the uh, side rad. Uh, again there's a standoff down the bottom, I've got another picture on that. And then um, probably the most complex bend, um, so you've got a, a 90 and then a 90 um, coming out from the rad and into the fill port of the pump. Um, this this took a bit of time to actually get it right, um, partly because I it was all about kind of the, that initial bend needed to be quite neat, and you've got two quite close bends going um, uh, next to one another. Um, but it turned out all right. This next picture shows that a bit better. So you can see I've got a standoff, another 30, 30 mil standoff. Uh, and then two 90s for the uh, inlet into the rad. The other one just comes straight out um, through that 90 and then back up. So that's just a different view of uh, how it connects in. This was one uh, when I was looking online, I just couldn't find out really closely how people were doing those into the radiator. But there you go, in, in the end it turned out pretty well. So then the last bend is coming um, out from the pump and into the inlet of the graphics card. You can see I had to change this around. So originally I was coming straight across uh, and like a 90 degree down. The problem was that it's slightly offset um, and just didn't look right when I was um, putting that straight run in. So what I did in the end was move it down and did another um, well, two 90 degree bends uh, going down and then back into the graphics card. And I thought it looks better by doing that. It makes it a bit more interesting anyway. Um, and worked out quite well. Uh, again, a bit, you know, uh, too close bends, but um, I didn't really have any issues with it at all. Okay, last picture, then I got a video of it um, actually fell in. So, um, followed all the videos about how to fill up. So, uh, you gradually fill up the reservoir on the pump. Uh, you put a bridging plug. You can see that's the white one in the middle for the power supply, and then I've unplugged pretty much everything. That way, I can just cycle the power and just, just basically just turn the pump. Um, I put half a tree of um, uh, cloth in there, uh, kitchen towel, um, just to catch anything that was going on. And obviously, I tested every fitting beforehand, and gradually you just um, cycle it through. Um, so you can see this is the first kind of um, what maybe a quarter of a liter that's sort of gone in, um, starting to fill up, no issues at the moment. Uh, and when you see the next video, that will be it actually filling all the way across um, through uh, through the block. Um, you can see actually as well on the next one uh, the loop and actually how the loop works. So out of the pump, through the graphic card, into the next rad, into the CPU, back round to the last rad, and then that back round again. There is a video of it just uh, soak testing in, um, leak testing. Uh, so you can see it's been running now probably for about an hour. I left it for a couple of hours, uh, checked every seal, checked for uh, you know any leaks. The, the white paper with the red really helps because you can see anything going on, but no issues whatsoever. 
So these next pictures are of the final build. Actually, there was one change, which I changed the RGB lights in this to um, programmable ones later on. Uh, but, but basically, it's uh, about the same. I also haven't sun synced up all of the lights at this point. So you can see the front. Um, you can see the uh, the biggest run coming all the way down. It gets uh, lit, and lit up quite well, actually, by the, um, the pump lights. Uh, the side... I'm um, starting to go through the color change here. And again, you can see the RGB light strips that I put in. Um, so these were changed around, put programmable ones in. There was much better control then of the lights uh, and being able to sync it. Uh, just a, another view from the side. Um, you can see as it goes through the, the light changes, the, the pipes um, start lighting up with that red, which is uh, really good. Again, I, I fiddled around with these lights to really get it into a, a good position. The final video of it working. Uh, at this point, I was um, running full benchmarks, so I was really trying to stress test it. Um, for temperatures, I'm getting about um, 40 degrees on the graphics card at full load. That's not overclocked, and the CPO is overclocked 5 gig, uh, and that goes to a max of about 60, so still a bit of headroom. All in all, uh, really pleased with the build. looks really good. Just need to sync up these RGB lights now properly. So that's it, that's the full build. Um, I did make some changes. I'll put another M.2 drive in uh, later on, and I'll put a full parts list of everything I, I ended up purchasing. Key things I learned were um, certainly practice with the hard shoes, but don't be daunted by it. Um, if you watch the videos, it's really not that difficult to do, and I'm not really sure that you need all of these very expensive uh, jigs and so forth. You can do most of it by by hand, uh, you know, and even using things like cereal boxes to help with um, uh, getting 90 degree bends if you want. Um, other things I learned was uh, the fittings. You just, no matter what you do, uh, drawing it out, it, you, you only really know what's happening once you start building it. And that's when you start finding that fittings need to come out slightly more. Uh, you've got to buy standoffs like I did. Um, so it really takes some time to get it absolutely right. Once it's in place, um, you know, temperatures are just amazing. Uh, it's much quieter than all fans, uh, quieter even when it, than my uh, Corsair IAIO that I had before. Um, so really pleased with it. Um, looks good, uh, and I highly recommend the case as well. The case is just brilliant to work with. There's just so much room, and because you can take the um, panels off, all the panels off, um, it's very easy uh, relatively to work inside it. So um, if you've got any questions, please put them in the uh, comments below, and I'm happy to help. Thanks very much.